Elden Ring is back at the top of the Steam sales charts. Or it was. It was right after Christmas, right after the holidays in 2022. And it went as on sale. Uh, it was a really good deal. And so a lot of new people are probably playing it. And so I thought that I would just run through the first part of the game and give you my tips for success. Hi, my name is Dan and welcome back to Double Back for Ammo. In this video, I'm going to start off a new character in Elden Ring and I'm just going to kind of run through the first area, the first couple areas of the game. And I'm going to show you who to fight, who to avoid, what items to get, and how to power up your character pretty quickly. And if you find this useful, I'd appreciate it if you click the like button on this video and help me show it to more people on YouTube. So here's my character that I've been playing Elden Ring with for 115 hours. Marveloso! <laughs> I, I don't know where I came up with that name, but uh, that's what I named him. Marveloso is a level 91 confessor. And I've been playing this game for 115 hours with Marveloso. So now I'm going to start a new game as a new character. Um, the Confessor is a pretty decent class that starts you off with uh, a good balance between melee and a couple spells to cast, but the Warrior really is sort of an easy class to start the game with. I'm going to call this guy Butterblade! Butterbladder. <laughs> I mistyped. Butterblade! I, I don't know why. I like that name. It's just, it's just fun. And uh, yeah, so we're going to choose the keepsake. I mean, I always go with the Crimson and Amber Medallion because it increases your maximum HP right off the start. All right, so we're finished and we're going to start up a new game. I'm going to skip over all the cutscenes because uh, what I really want to talk about is gameplay. All right, so we're starting off here at the Chapel of Anticipation. Uh, so as you can see, there's like a statue of a, of a maiden behind us reaching out her hand and uh then over here on the side there's a dead person and a message the message oh so yeah we got a tarnished wise and finger though the path be broken uncertain claim your place as elden lord so that's your objective for the, pretty much the game is to become elden lord uh you have to try to figure out what that means uh, also, you have to try to figure out what it means that this woman is dead here in the crypt in which we just revived. All right, and there it is. That is Stormvale Castle. That is an area that we'll get to uh, in a little bit. Actually, we might not get to that area in this video. I think I'm going to show you how to do everything in order to get to Stormvale Castle and start killing all the bosses. Uh, so for right now, we're going to run down this path. You don't really have to do anything here. You could jump over the nearest cliff because you're going to die anyway. Um, I'm going to switch over to my shield so that I can block some attacks. And I'm going to go over here and trigger a boss fight. By the way, this is how all FromSoft uh, RPGs start. They start off with a, uh, with a battle that you can't win. So there he is, the Grafted Scion. And he killed me instantly. Went right around my block. Okay, so we, right away we get the Flask of Crimson Tears and the Flask of Cerulean Tears. We can look at these items a little bit more in depth in the menu. And uh, if we press, you know, so I'm using a, like an Xbox style controller and I'm playing this on PC. And if I uh, press the X button, I could switch the middle display to see more information about these items. So the Sacred Flask will allow us to restore our HP, and the Flask of Cerulean Tears allows us to restore our FP, which is our, uh, our ability to cast magic and uh, use certain abilities. We also have a Memory of Grace in our inventory. This allows us to sacrifice all our runes to go back to the last uh, Site of Grace. And there's that Tarnished Wise and Finger we picked up, which is for online play. Currently, I'm not playing in network mode. That way, we don't see a bunch of other players and their messages so another message here to read the cage of not the cave of knowledge lies below uh and yeah there's gonna be some pop-ups until we get out of here and if we talk to this ghost over here uh the ghost encourages us to uh go over the side of the cliff and uh take a, a short tutorial 
I'm not gonna do that because we don't really have I don't really want to dedicate like video to that but uh, I do want to point out at the back of the cave up there on that ledge you can see that there's like an item gleaming and I'm gonna show you how to get up there and get that item during this video in this area there's a uh, goblin statue uh, it's kind of kind of a funky little statue I'm not gonna make more comments than that but uh, yeah, if we uh, examine it, it'll say you want to use a storm sword key and we don't have one. So this is a site of grace. It's kind of like a save point in the uh, old school world. If we rest at this site of grace, we will get all of our HP back, all of our FP. We can pass time to morning, noon, night, whatever. Uh, we can change our flasks. We can... Uh, Add a charge to the flask if we have a golden seed, and then we could also allocate our flask charges. We can distribute, like for example, we could put all four of them. Uh, we could give ourselves four, which is actually what I'm going to do for the first part of the game. And then in my inventory over here, you can see the pouch. And right now, the memory of grace is uh, in the first pouch spot. I'm actually going to um, remove this, and then I'm going to assign. Uh, switch, I guess I should say, and put my Flask of Crimson Tears there. And I'm going to put some other items into the pouch for uh, ease of use later. Alright, so again, those are the Finger Sever and the other finger are some online items. The fingers, um, they sort of have a sort of cosmic backstory in the game. Um, we'll, we'll encounter more about the two fingers being like this holy kind of oracle. It's kind of a monster made out of human fingers. Yeah, this game is uh, is pretty interesting. Uh, it's got some pretty interesting lore to it, but they don't really tell you the story of the game. Uh, and the reason of that is because you're not really here to find out what happened in the past. You're here to make a new story, your own journey. So here's the money shot. When we open up this door and we walk out into the limb grave area. Look at that. Gorgeous, isn't it? All right, and yeah, up there on the cliff is Castle Stormvale. That's the area I showed you earlier, and uh, your first objective is going to be to go there. So let's go over here and talk to this guy. And then we'll go talk to him. to the lands between for the Elden Ring? Hmm? Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Without guidance... How does he know they were maidenless? ...of runes and without an invitation to the round table hold, you are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. So he is right, like without a maiden we're not going to be able to level up. Luckily for you, however, there is one shining ray of hope for even the maidenless. Maiden. He's got blood on his hands. Vare. Take care to listen. Are you familiar with grace? The golden light that gives life to you tarnished. You may also behold its golden rays pointing in a particular direction at times that is the guidance of grace so from you can see this little ray that's pointing in that direction toward that church over there in the background that's what he's talking about it's pointing from the side of grace to the next place that it's guiding us to go to follow even if it leads you to your grave Oh, this guy. I, Grace's guidance will reveal the path forward, most certainly, to Castle Stormvale, over on the cliff, the home of the decrepit demigod, Godric the Grafted. So the secret here is if you follow the Grace and you head straight over to Castle Stormvale, you're dead. You're, you're not going to be able to survive. It's time you set off, I should think. To castles if you seek the eld all right so nice little recap at the end there that's uh, sort of an indicator when they start repeating themselves that means that you've exhausted their uh, their dialogue and it's time to move on 
So Roa fruit uh, will help us later on. And if we examine this thing, uh, we will get an item. This is so it's telling us about the summoning pools. We don't really, we're not going to really use these because we're not in network mode. So we're not really going to summon anyone into our game. And we got the small gold effigy. So the thing about starting off a game of Elden Ring is that just because you're in like the starting area of the game, it doesn't mean that you're ready to go around killing everything you see. Like, for example, the guy that's right in front of us there, riding his horse up and down the path, that is a tree sentinel. That is an extremely difficult and challenging boss that we are not going to be ready to take on until probably 10 or 20 hours into the game. So I'm going to give that thing a wide berth, and I'm going to run over here and collect some more items. And I'm also going to kill some animals. Now, before you get all mad about animal cruelty, I'm actually hoping that these animals will drop some thin beast bones because those will be useful in crafting. All right, so we made it over to the church here, and there's like a crucified tarnished right here. And if you look at the base, you will pick up a golden rune. All right, so this is the first church, the Church of Ella. I'm going to touch the sign of grace here so that I can fast travel back here later. Just like the uh, tutorial says there. Alright, and then we're going to go over here and examine this uh, smithing table here. And yeah, I forgot that there's a pop-up every time you approach something. So yeah, uh, you can use this smithing table to strengthen your armaments all the way up to uh, plus three. Once you get them up to plus three, you should uh, soon thereafter get an invitation to something called the Round Table Hold, which is which has a smith, which can actually strengthen your weapons up to plus 20, I think. So pretty good. All right, so they found another smithing stone, or a smithing stone there on the table. And if I go to strengthen my armament, you'll see that I've got these two swords, but I've only got one smithing stone. I need two. In order to strengthen it, I also need 210 runes to spend on the process. So we're not ready to do that just yet. So first order of business is to uh, increase the power of our weapons by making them plus one, plus two, plus three. And then we should be ready to start taking on some bosses. So now we're going to talk to this guy. You're a tarnished. I can see it. But I can also see that you're not after my throat. Then why not purchase a little something? I am Carly, purveyor of fine goods. So Kali is actually like the most interesting of these um, uh, wandering merchants, or you'll find these merchant guys all over the world. Uh, but this guy is the one who actually talks to you the most. Uh, I am of a nomadic. So if you ask him about himself, selling wares as I travel. The land has been tainted by madness since the shattering of the Elden Ring. So you get a little bit more story. Like yourself, who keep things from drying up entirely. Let's say you're a very welcome customer. All right, and he also, you we know, can also ask him for a recommendation. Rooms, you should buy yourself a crafting kit. A crafting kit allows you to make basic items on your own. Essential, really if you intend to survive out here for any duration. The kit costs a bundle, and I admit I do take my cut. But the important thing is that you survive. Every custom counts, after all. All right, so that's his recommendation. Um, I don't have any runes, though. So if I, but if I go into my menu, go to my inventory, we'll find the golden rune that uh, I found just outside. And if I use it, I'll gain 400 runes. So I'm going to go ahead. What is it? All right, so here's the crafting kit. It costs 300 runes. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy it. And uh, that will make it so that I have a new option available on the menu. You've made an excellent choice. All right, and so now we have the item crafting option here in the menu. And one of the basic options is what I was talking about here, the bone darts, which require thin beast bones. So that's why you want to go around and 
unfortunately kill some of the livestock. That way you can make your own bone darts because they're little projectiles that you can use for ranged attack. All right, so now we're just going to kind of wander around Limgrave and uh, there's some animals over there. So I'm going to run toward them and hopefully kill them. Ah, they're not really dropping the uh, beast bones that I would like. All right, so as you can see, there's a guy over there patrolling. So I'm going to crouch, which puts me into stealth mode, and I'm going to go in these bushes. And it actually makes it more difficult for him to see if you're crouched and hiding in the bushes. So there's actually some stealth elements in this game that you can use to your advantage in the early parts. So now that he has patrolled and turned his back, I'm going to lock onto him. I'm going to walk over right up behind him. When I get right behind him, I'm going to stand up and then I'm going to stab him in the back. Basically, I just kind of held down on my right button there and uh, yeah, I was able to stab him. So as you can see, there's another guy over there walking around in the woods. So I'm going to sneak over here, get into the bushes. Hopefully he won't be able to see me. I'm going to even take a chance and see if I can get to these bushes. All right. So hopefully he can't see me. Yeah, he's not able to see me. He's walking closer and closer. So as he walks closer, I'm going to try to move to a position behind him and then stand up and stab him in the back. That's a critical hit is what that's called. And uh, so as you can see, I'm building up my runes. I'm getting more runes uh, every time I kill one of these guys. And also I'm collecting some items a gold-tinged excrement could be useful in crafting. Uh, I always collect items. Every time I see the Y button pop up, I just press it, in order, especially to clear the message off the screen. Uh, so here's another guy. Oh, those Kukuri are really good items for throwing. So actually, I'm going to go into my equipment. And down here, you can see my Flask of Cerulean Tears is here. I'm going to remove it. And, uh, oh, actually, yeah, because we we're not really using those right now. And I'm going to put my Kukuri on there. Kukri. Kukri? I don't know. Doing my best. All right. So there's a guy who's just kind of standing over here. So I'm going to sneak up behind him and stabby stabby. You see, like, as a new Charnished, we're, like, entirely too weak to go at these guys mano a mano. Um, if we if we face off with them, though, we definitely want to have our shield in our hand and not our twin blades. We're just not ready for that yet. Sometimes you'll see skulls like this in the, uh, in the uh, outdoors that are glowing. And if you break them, you will then uh, be able to pick up a golden rune. All right, so there's a couple more guys wandering around over here. There's one guy who's just sort of walking back and forth, as you can see. So while you're sneaking, you can actually hold the run button, and you can run while you're sneaking, and they still won't hear you. All right, so that didn't go too bad, and I didn't alert that guy over there. That's pretty good. All right, so I've got a new helm there, and it's probably better than what I'm currently wearing on my head. Um, but when you put on better equipment, it's heavier and it slows you down. It actually makes you less likely to survive. So, frankly, I just play the entire game with the armor I have on. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you want to try out different armor, that's great. You do you. Um, but you may find that you might not be able to roll or dodge attacks as easily. And you can get in some trouble that way. So I headed east from the cave back over to the path and went up to the top of the hill and here I am standing next to this little small statue. It's a little difficult to see there, but that is called a Stake of America. So when you stand near one of those things, it kind of gives you a, uh, a restart point that's different than a grace. So if I go over to that, those runes over there and I get killed, I'll respawn next to the Stake of America here. That'll be an option. All right, we got like two skulls here that we can uh, break for golden runes. Very nice. All right, and then if we go down the hill here, uh, we can see that there's a message in the middle of the path here. There's also a guy standing there. 
A chamber lies under the ruins. So that's a good little tip. Um, I'm going to stand up now. I'm going to move forward a little bit and try to catch this guy's attention and get him a move away from his guard post and come over here and attack me. And when he does, I'm going to block it. And what I did, I'll tell you in a second. All right, so that is a stance breaking combo with a critical hit. That's what that's called. So basically, I blocked. I used my shield to block his attack. The second his attack bounced off my shield, I pressed my strong attack button, and that's what caused me to immediately counter and hit him. So then, uh, because he's, you know, these guys are not weak, but they're not terribly strong either, it caused his stance to break and it caused him to fall over, at which point I was able to run him through with a critical hit like you saw. And that's perfect. That's the way you want to fight every enemy in Elden Ring, but you won't be able to. All right, so if we go over to this opening, uh, there is a, a guy over there and also a wolf. All right, so I want those two to come over here toward me. That guy's kind of backing away, darn it. All right, here he comes, and he's going to try to hit me. I'm going to block and immediately counter and broke his stance and stabby stabby. All right, now as you can see, the wolf is, uh, is not paying attention. There's another guy patrolling. So I don't want to get the whole group involved. I want to wait out and... Tr okay, so he starts patrolling the other way. So now I'm going to come and try to draw this wolf out. And if he's not going to... Oh, I missed him. Yeah, so throwing that Kakuri and hitting the wall over there caused that guard to go over there and check the noise. So when those guys turn around and they head the other way, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to tick off this wolf and if it doesn't come at me I'm just gonna kill it there we go and then I'm gonna beat it out of there because I don't want to get detected all right I'm gonna sneak along this wall here so that guy's patrol route is greatly altered and that's not great uh, what I'm gonna try to do is wait till he's walking away and then I'm gonna go get the attention of this guard over here who's just gonna stand in there this way I'm not getting overwhelmed by enemies so because his patrol route is different now I have to kind of check and see what he's going to do. Oh, it looks like he's going back to his regular patrol route. So I'm going to wait till him and the wolf are a good distance away on their patrol route. And then I'm going to come over here and get this guy's attention. And I'm going to lead him way back here for a fight. And I'm going to block his first attack, counter. And then stabby stabby. All right, so now we are ready to take on that patrolling guy and that wolf, but I'm just going to heal up a little bit. All right, I'm just going to keep backing away. Whoa, he broke my stance. Yeah, I wasn't going to be able to get in position because of the wolf's carcass in the way, so sometimes little things like that will happen. Now there's another one right there, but there is a really strong guy in armor patrolling just behind him. You see that guy? So I'm going to wait until he turns around and he is headed off to the left, which he's going to be headed now, and then I'm going to sneak up behind that guy and give him a little poke in the back. Okay, he should be a good enough distance away that I can get away with it. And I did angle my camera just to make sure that he didn't see. Alright, and he didn't see, so now I can go down into this, uh, into this hidden room underneath the ruins. Alright, so down here in this chest we're going to find the wet blade. This is an important item because it allows us to add skills, the ashes of war, to our weapons and that'll make us far more powerful and we also got a new ash of war the stomp as i come back out of here i'm going to uh, crouch down and make sure that i'm not seen by mr armor yeah so i'm gonna wait until he go is going back past the other way and then i'm going to sneak over to that wagon that i'm that i'm looking at over there in the distance sneaky sneaky all right now i'm going to come up around this side of the wagon here as you can see there's one guy walking away and there's another guy who's stationary so when i'm going to let that guy get a little bit further away 
And then I'm gonna go over and stab this guy in the back. Oh, that guy hurt. So here he comes. And I broke his stance and taking him out. This is the best way to take on this area. This is really the only way you're gonna make it easy enough. Now, if you jump on the back of this wagon, you'll find that there is a chest in the back of that wagon. You can open it. And we should get the flail, I think. Yes, the flail. Okay, so if you look at this uh, piece of equipment, if you try to equip it, you can see there's a red X on it. You can see that my dexterity is not quite high enough. It's at a 16. So the next time I level up, I'm going to want to start pouring points into my dexterity because I want to be able to equip that flail pretty soon. Okay, so now with those two guys dead, we're going to come over here and meet this guy. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the stealth move on him. I could probably just take him. I haven't had bad luck with the other guys. Uh, but once he turns back, we're going to stand up and stab him, stab him. All right, now I'm going to go over here to this other wagon. This wagon is turned around the other way so that the back of it is facing the road and so is the treasure chest. All right, so there is another guy who is patrolling the north end of the street here. And I want to kind of check and make sure he's not facing this direction. And then I can kill this guy. And yeah, didn't alarm him at all. All right, so he's still not headed back this way. So I'm going to quickly open up this chest and take the loot, which is a great sword. All right, and then I'm going to go over here and sneak up behind this guy and stab him. But there is another guy opposite who is going to be alarmed when I do that. See him? He's coming. There he is. But just like before, we just want to do like a guard counter on him and take him out. All right, so with both those guys down, now we can get this item over here. I don't understand why the guy is standing. He might have been alerted by something earlier, but what I'm going to do is make sure that uh, both those guys are walking that way and then Stab it is. Oh, that guy turned around and he's facing this way. So hopefully he wasn't alerted by that. So uh, we're going to follow this guy, provided that, oh, the armor guy is coming this way. So uh, yeah, the last guy I want to kill in this area is that guy who's patrolling out there in the middle of the street. He's carrying a horn. Uh, so when he gets way up there to the top and the armored guy is facing the other way, I'm gonna go over to this rock. I'm gonna lock onto him. And I'm gonna get behind him and do the old stabby. Oh, he was actually alerted. Okay, and so now I'm gonna go over here and get this item. The map of the, of the Limgrave area. And then I'm gonna get out of here. All right, so it's kind of perfect that it's at night. I'm gonna run over here toward where you see that big sword uh, in the background over there. Oh, actually, so there's a site of grace. Over there, that's where I'm headed. I'm gonna activate it and I'm gonna rest at it. So then this will trigger the cutscene with Melina, who is a character who offers to be our maiden since we're maidenless. She will convert our runes and allow us to level up. She also gives us a uh, whistle, which allows us to summon the spectral steed. Greetings, traveler from beyond the fog. I am Melina. I offer you an accord. All right, I know I said I wasn't going to watch the cutscenes, but the cutscenes are awesome. It's difficult not to watch them. Have you heard of the Finger Maidens? They serve the Two Fingers, offering guidance and aid to the Tarnished. But you, I am afraid, are maidenless. I can play the role of Maiden, turning runes into strength to aid you in your search for the Elden Ring. You need only take me with you to the foot of the Erd Tree, 
Okay, so easy. I've, I've always accepted it. I've never refused it. I don't really know what would happen if you refused it. Ah, another matter. I bequeath to you this ring. So there's the whistle that allows us to summon the spectral street to torrent. great distances. It will summon a spectral steed named Torrent. Torrent has chosen you. Treat him with respect. I will. All right, so now we can level up. Let my hand rest upon you. Oh, I forgot. If you if you level up while Mullen is there, you go through that whole animation. Uh, so, like I said, we want to improve our dexterity. Uh, looks like I can raise it once. With the runes that I've acquired from killing enemies, uh, but if I were to have used the runes that I have on hand, those um, those other runes that uh, that I was picking up in the field, I could possibly give myself more money and level up again for sure. All right, so now we can see the map of Limgrave and we can see where we've been. So we started off down here, and this is where the uh, church is, and I'm going to travel there now. So this over here, this is a really interesting character. Oh, first off, I'm going to get kind of angle under her. Oh, she looks at me when I move around. As you can see, she has two faces, which is kind of interesting. And you'll figure out why uh, if you go on her quest line. A pleasure to meet thee, Tarnished. I am the witch, Rena. I'd heard She's not. of a Tarnished hurtling about atop a spectral steed. And upon looking into the matter, the talk, I surmise, is of thee. Thou art possessed of the power, no? To call forth a spectral steed named Torrent. I can, ah, not that I have. As I had hoped, I was entrusted this for thee, by Torrent's former master. Okay, so the spirit calling bell allows you to summon... Uh, spirit ashes during certain battles when you see the spirit ash icon on the screen and she gave us our first spirit ash the lone wolf ashes which are going to come in very handy forth spirits summon them with it from ash and return to the earth tree the spirits will obey thine command but briefly as they recall battles past now it is thine Forgive mine intrusion, tarnished. I doubt we shall again meet. But all the how long will it be before the tarnished tire of obeisance to the two fingers? And off she goes. All right, so here in my pouch, I'm going to add the uh, spectral steed whistle to uh, one of my shortcut commands. So by holding Y. On my Xbox style controller and uh, pressing left on the directional pad, I'll be able to summon Torrent. Field battle with Torrent adds a whole new dimension to the game. For example, I'll get on him and we'll go right over here and we'll kill this guy. Uh, see, so you can kill the livestock a lot easier. And you can also fight these guys on horseback. You press left to strike them on the left side. Pretty easy. Okay, so if you get struck while you're riding Torrent, then Torrent can take damage too, and you can heal him by feeding him something called uh, um, Roa Raisins, which you can craft right here using Roa for. So I'm going to go ahead and craft some of those. And I'm going to equip them on my inventory. And that way if you select them down below and you press the X button, you can feed Torrent a raisin. He's a good steed. So there's like a, there's like a glowing beetle over here. And if I jump off my horse and run after it and kill it, I'm going to have to do better. Oh, it's going to run over that encampment. You gotta kill them before they vanish too. Teardrop Scarab. So when you uh, 
uh, kill those, it'll replenish your flasks. So like if you kill a red scarab, it'll replenish your uh, your HP flasks, and if you kill a blue scarab, it'll replenish your uh, your FP flask. All right, so now we're back at the side of grace that we were at a little earlier. Uh, there's some interesting lore. If you go, you'll see like this giant greatsword that's sort of buried in the ground. You'll see these around uh, the whole of the lands between, and you you can go up to it and you can read the uh, sword, what's inscribed on it. And it gives you like a little bit of the history of the world, but like I said, it's not all that important. We're not really here to learn history as much as we are to carve a new path. So there's a writer that is a Kaiden writer, I think his name is. He's a little too difficult for us right now. So we're going to get back on our horse and we're going to stay well away from that guy. So if you travel along the roads, you'll notice other people traveling along the roads. They're like these undead nobles. Um, they've lived like way too long. And uh, the fact is that they've kind of been looking for something like the ruins of like an old place, but they've kind of forgot what they were looking for. So some of them just kind of wander around now and uh, they're weak and they're easy. It's an easy way to, you know, increase your runes. So go ahead and kill groups like that. So if I go a little bit off the road over here, I'll hear somebody calling out to me. So yeah, we're getting called out to by somebody and we can't really be sure of the source. But if you were to use headphones, you'd be able to kind of vector in and figure out that it's this small brown plant right here. So I'm just going to strike it. <laughs> right, so I'm going to talk to this guy. He uh, he opens up a small little quest that we'll finish during this video. You were just breaking the spell, weren't you? Thank you. The name's Bok. I was pushed out of the cave. Told not to come back. Not ever. Then I ended up as a tree. <laughs> Lucky you came along with Ended up as a tree. Oh. What a shame. When they threw me out of the cave, they took everything I owned. And so this is all I have to express my thanks. I hope you can forgive me. A mushroom. Or, or if you can afford to wait for a while, I could sneak back into the cave and bring back something of actual value. Then I'd be of some real use to you, I reckon. Right, but I'll need a moment. I'm, I'm frightened of them. My knees start knocking. So a cave on the shore. All right, so that's all of his dialogue options, and uh, we're going to go find the cave that he's in a little bit later. All right, so there's a group camped out there by the bridge. Uh, there is like a little, uh, like one of those uh, beetles there, but it's not colored. And I think when you... When you destroy it, you'll get a smithing stone. I'm not sure, but it's surrounded by really tough enemies that I'm not ready for yet. So I'm not going to go over there. Instead, I'm going to cross over the road here. And there is a little path down right here that leads to the uh, lake. Um, lake Agil, I think this is called. All right, and you'll notice there's like a camp out there. Looks like full of weak guys, right? Like you probably go out there, kill them all and take their stuff. Don't go out there. It's a trap. <laughs> Instead, I'm going to ride uh, west this way and I'm going to keep going at top speed uh, because you can see that little plume of steam there. A giant crab is going to come out of the water. Oh, it didn't. It didn't come out. Prove me a liar. So when you cross like a glowing threshold like that, you're not able to continue riding torrent. And now we're inside the Limgrave tunnels. So now I'm going to equip my shield and my flail, and I'm going to go into the caves here. And in here, we're going to find a lot of smithing stones. Uh, the problem is, is that these miner guys, even though they don't really pay attention to us, uh, they're not going to let us run over and, and collect their smithing stones. You can see the smithing stone jutting out of the wall right there, that glowing yellow rock. We want to get that, but the miner's going to kill us if we 
go over there and try to get it. So I'm going to sneak up to him, uh, lock on to him, and I'm going to hold my R2 button to wind up a super powered attack and take him out. One hit, just like that. Uh, otherwise, those guys are pretty tough, and they are extremely resilient to against uh, slash attacks like you would do with a curved sword. So first I'm going to um, take out this guy. And then this guy the same way. Ow! <laughs> Alright, we're getting smithing stones that we can use to uh, improve our weapons. Anyway, there's a guy back here. And there's a guy just kind of sitting over here. Uh, so here we're going to switch back to sword. And uh, there's a couple of uh, rats down here who are going to come out and attack. Alright, they're pretty easy, but they kind of ganged up on us, so... I'm gonna heal. And then we can go down here and pillage this corpse for another smithing stone. All right, so we've come on a, to another elevator and you'll notice that if I smash these boxes out of the way over here and look down, there's actually a path down there that we can jump to. All right, so let's jump down there. And then from here, you can see another ledge like over here because we didn't take the elevator down. There's actually a gaping hole that we could fall into down there. And I'm just going to keep going down these ledges here. And we've arrived at the bottom there. So I'm going to switch back to my sword and try to take out the dogs as quickly as possible, then switch to my flail and take out this guy as fast as I can, heal up. And then there's another guy over here I can take out who is actually mining a smithing stone. And then as you can see back here behind the shack, there is another smithing stone. And then a large glintstone scrap from the corpse in this side of the shack. So that is a pretty good haul. Yep, we now have a total of seven smithing stones. So I think we got six in this cave. That's pretty good. There's also a boss in this cave, but yeah, we're too weak for that boss. So we are going to start heading back out of the cave. So that tunnel I just passed right there on the way down, that's where the boss is. All right, now outside the cave here, I'm just going to do a quick uh, map check just to show you where I am. So yeah, the limb grave tunnels are down here. Okay, so now I'm actually going to fast travel back to the to the Church of Ella and Kale, and I'm going to use the smithing table there to improve my weapons. All right, and then, yep, I'm just going to uh, make both of these plus one. So after improving our sword, we should be quite a bit stronger or, you know, quite a bit more efficient at killing. We should be ready to take on this group at the bridge here. So actually, I'm going to try to kill this beetle. All right, we got the Ash of War, Determination. Uh, these guys are a little mad, though. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to have to give Torrent some raisins. You see that? I took them both out with a guard counter. That is quite a bit uh, more strong than I was before. Um, this Cayman Rider on the bridge, though, is still a problem. So I'm going to get back on my steed. I'm going to try to grab an item off to the right here. Got it. A smithing stone. And then I'm going to get away from him as fast as possible. And I'm going to stay. There's like a little path here. Uh, no, he's still after me. That's unfortunate. I'm going to try to ride down here and see if I can get away from him. Uh, a good indicator of whether or not you're still being pursued is if you can open your map. If you can't open your map, then you're still being pursued by an enemy. Uh, so we have entered, we've gone off the map here, but as you can see, the path that uh, we're next to right here, 
this is the path that we want to follow up to the northeast. Ah. Sometimes those will explode. So yeah, I got a somber smithing stone from him. This is a smithing stone that'll allow me to upgrade a special weapon. Special weapons are only dropped by certain enemies, and you can't like they're like not like normal weapons like the ones I'm currently equipped with. Uh, just to check, this is where I am on the map that I encountered that little beetle that gave me the somber smithing stone. Just up the hill from that beetle is this place. It's called the Artist Shack, I think. Yeah, Artist Shack. So there's this glowing painting here. If we examine the painting, we pick out, we kind of pick it up as an item. We sort of take the canvas, I guess. So what we want to do is go and find this specific spot in the world, and there we'll find a hidden item. So I went back to the Church of Ella, and I'm using, I've got a lot more smithing stones now, so I'm going to use them to make my other scimitar uh, plus one. So now I've got a uh, plus one scimitar in my left hand and a plus two in my right hand. I almost forgot there's a side of grace over here. This is a good one to at least mark on your map because you want to come back to it later. There's this ruin piece that has kind of fallen between the rocks and it sort of forms a bridge. There's a guy up there on the top of that bridge who's going to be calling out to us. Uh, but then underneath there's a whole bunch of demi-humans under here. A bunch of weak guys that I want to kill. You hear him? He just keeps on going. He's constantly making a pitch to you. All right, so now that we've cleaned up underneath the bridge, we're going to go up top and talk to that guy. Someone who might be interested in rescuing the great Kenny Fight. Servant to the true order and celebrated repudiator of the pulse. Oh, Archie, grant me sucker. All right, we're here to grant you sucker. You've come to lend me your aid, have you? Well, that's... That's very kind, but, um... No. No, but the help is very much appreciated. Even from... He's a bit of a tool. Despite appearances, nobility is no prerequisite to serving the true order. You might have heard of me. Kenneth Height. Next in line is the rightful ruler of Limgrave. Young Tarnished. Sure. I would have a boon of you. I want you to take back my fort. It lies to the south, beyond the Mistwood. A knight commander from Stormvale took it. A fool! And plumb mad to boot. Simply obsessed with blood. Obsessed with blood. That's like an important clue there. So this guy's a total tool, and he, he's going to stand here while we go attack his fort, supposedly. What are you waiting for? A kiss goodbye? <laughs> my fort lies to the south. Beyond the Mistwood. Take it back for me. Oh, I see. You wish to know the reward. Be nice. Fret not. The great Kenneth Height is known for his considerable largesse. The celebrations will be lavish indeed upon the dawn of my fort's retrieval. Okay, so as you might guess, the reward he's going to give us is terrible. But uh, the quest to take down Fort Height is totally worthwhile. So we're going to do it anyway. Now, allow me to furnish you with a little advice. I would take great care to avoid Godric's tarnished hunts were I in your shoes. That depraved lot are obsessed with sacrificing tarnished like you for the sake of grafting. Honestly, Godric's nothing more than a jumped-up country bumpkin. Lord, oh, don't make me laugh. 
First, he hid himself amongst the women folk to flee the capital, then hid from Radan in that castle. Then he insulted Melania, lost to her in battle, only to lick her boots rather than die like a man. <laughs> Has he no shame? The big girl's blouse? And to think, he's the blood of Godfrey, last of the golden lineage. Well, you almost wouldn't know it to look at him. Yeah. I almost feel sorry for the chap the more I think of it. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. Um, yeah, so there were a lot of references there to characters that you'll meet later on in the game. Just kind of keep it in mind or, you know, forget about it. Uh, the story in Elden Ring is not the best part of Elden Ring, even though it is a really good story. Okay, I think we've exhausted his uh, dialogue. However, we're going to continue across the bridge here and double jump. Did you know you can double jump with the Spectral Steed? So if you press jump once and then jump again, you'll double jump in midair. All right, so over here is a bunch of graves, and on these graves you can find a bunch of gold runes of various value. That's here on the map, by the way. Even uh, I don't have the map, but I'll uh, go back and get it. And there's Kenneth Height. Limgrave Error. Yeah, so some of these gold runes we just picked up are really good. This one's 400, 1200. We got two for 1200. We got another one for 2000. That's awesome. We have to kind of carefully jump onto this grave so that we can pillage those remains to get uh, Fever's cookbook. Uh, now these cookbooks will actually tell you what items they will allow you to craft in the crafting menu. Uh, so there it is, and if we just press, if we switch the mid display, uh, it uh, gives us the knowledge to craft a sleep pot, which is actually a very useful item. Okay, so we're going to leave Kenneth in the rain, and we're going to continue following the path down here. Okay, and there's a big giant. We are not ready to take on that giant, so we're going to ride past him and into the church that you might be able to see the ruins of beyond there. And... Uh, then we are going to quickly use the uh, grace, which you can just sort of barely see in the doorway there. I think uh, you missed us completely. So yeah, it's a pretty good point to try to ride past him. So here we are in the third church of America and I'm gonna quickly use this uh, lost grace. And then over here in this uh, bowl, I think is where we'll find the flask of wondrous physic and the crimson crystal tear. All right, so the flask of wondrous physic is a fantastic item you'll be using for most of your game. Also over here you can pick up a sacred tear. So now when we go back to the side of grace, we're going to have a lot more stuff to do in the menu. So yeah, with that item we can now increase the amount of uh Either HP or FP that is repla that is replenished by our flasks. So that's cool. Uh, now, so we have this um, option in the menu to mix the wondrous physic, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the crimson crystal tier into the first slot. As you can see, we source half of our max HP. So for right now, the uh, wondrous physic is actually just going to be another sort of flask that we can use in emergencies. Uh, but we are going to find some other uh, crystal tiers that we can use to uh, come up with some pretty effective combos that we can use in combat. All right, and from the Third Church of America, we're going to continue riding out along this path to the south here into the Mistwoods. So the Mistwoods are pretty true to their name. Uh, and as you can see, it's starting to get misty as we get further into them. This candle is interesting. If you... Uh, if you examine it, a ghost will appear and will lead you quite a ways down the path. But as you can see by that bear standing up there on that ridge, it's kind of dangerous to just follow the ghost. So I don't recommend it until maybe you're a little stronger. So we're going to keep riding until we see this on the side here. And there's the map of the east area and there's a bear 
tearing up a tree there, so there's an item right below him. So I'm going to go grab that item and uh, run away from him as fast as possible. And we're going to head right back over this way. Uh, yeah, there's a small building here that I just want to kind of jump into so that we can see it's the Siafra River Well. That is actually an elevator that goes down to the bottom of the earth, to an entire city called the Eternal City that is located down there. All right, so as we're going this way, you can see we're now at the foot of a minor Erd tree. Uh, yep, okay, so we got the map, and now we can see the minor Erd tree here on the map. As you can see, there is uh, the minor oak trees, in other cases, are going to be guarded by large bosses that we would need to defeat in order to get uh, the sacred tears. Um, however, we can go over here and we can, there's like several flat of the red beetles that we can use to replenish our flasks. And there's another plate here on this side, and if we pick up the item, we get the spike crack tier and the green spill crystal tier which are both pretty good tiers that we can use in our Flask of Wonders physics. Now here's a little trap that the Demi-Humans have set up. Uh, I'm gonna take it on on horseback. See all we got were thin beast bones from that guy, and he calls for all of his buddies who hop down out of the cliff because they think they've got an easy mark. It's actually kind of hit easy to hit them because they spend a lot of their time screaming and when they're screaming they're especially easy to kill so as we continue riding through the forest off to the right of the path you can see all these vampire bats flying around this tree uh, actually it's a crucifix but there's a golden rune underneath it and uh, now all we have to do is kill the vampires Okay, and that over there, that big bear, that is a rune bear. We don't want to go anywhere near it. We are not tough enough for that. So here we are on the map, and we're really close to these runes here. Uh, these runes are haunted. You can hear somebody howling, so I'm going to get off my horse. Let's see if I can get to where I can see him. There he is. You see him, like, just under my direction indicator? There's a guy standing up there on top of the ruins. Uh, these are called the Misswood Runes, and he won't come down for any reason right now. Uh, but I'll show you how to get him to come down and talk to us later. All right, there's a lot of good items in these runes, but there's also a rune bear that is, uh, sleeping. And rune bears are extremely large, extremely powerful bears that you want to avoid contact with if possible. So I'm going to start sneaking around, and I'm going to go over here in this little room and open this chest. Alright, so Smithing Stone 2 is a slightly higher level Smithing Stone, so it should allow us to upgrade higher level weapons even more. Alright, and there is the Rune Bear. Uh, so what I'm going to do, he is, he, he's sleeping right on top of an underground room with a very valuable item. So I'm going to run over there and drop into that room, room underground and uh, he's gonna wake up and be mad. Okay, here we go. There he is. All right, we're going down. You can hear him crashing around up there, right? He's a mad, but he can't get in here. He, the ground is shaking. Uh, so I'm going to get back on Torrent, and I'm going to ride out of here really fast. Try not to get stuck on anything. All right, so I found the road, and we've come out just south of a little demi-human trap. There they are, sort of waiting for people. So I'm going to kill them all. See, the curved swords are just really easy to fight with. The warrior has a really easy fighting style with these. Alright, and I think that's all the demi-humans. Yeah, there's an interesting 
glowing message over here on the ground. Open for business. Uh, but if we go a little bit back in here, we'll find a uh, one of the a nomad nomadic yes, merchant. Right this way. Right. Welcome, valued customer. Come, please. I'm hungry. I've been or two. hungry so long. Everybody in the land is like so hungry in so much pain. They really need somebody to take on the role of Elden Lord. Uh, so this guy actually sells smithing stones for 200 apiece. And uh, he also happens to sell a couple of cookbooks. So if we get back on the path and we continue following it out of the mist woods here. Uh, oh, so there's a little ghost sitting here. The night bedeviled by blood. So the mention of blood uh, is worth bearing in mind. So that's it. That is Fort Height. That is Kenneth Height's fort. Um, there's a site of grace over here. I'm going to go activate it really quickly so that I can fast travel back here. But I'm going to quickly head back to the Church of Ella. Well, you're back. Care to buy something? Okay, so you can ask about the howling in Mistwood. The howl of a wolf in the Mistwood. I suppose he must still be skulking about. I know. Why not meet him for yourself? Next time you hear the wolf's howl, make this signal right under the source. Oh, don't fret. There is nothing to fear. I just have an inkling the two of you might hit it off. All right, so over here, uh, just under our pouch, are the gestures. And uh, uh, as you can see, this one is a bow, a wave, a jump for joy, a point forwards. I'm going to replace the jump for joy by switching it for the finger snap that Kali just gave us. There it is. All right. Now I can open up this menu and I can do this gesture really quickly. Just like that. So before I head back to talk up to Blight, I'm actually going to go down to the shoreline just a uh, little bit uh, south of here and uh, investigate. So up at the top of this hill, right behind Kale is uh, uh, the Church of Ella, is a statue. Uh, let's start pointing in a certain direction. And if you examine it, then the gatekeeper will guide you to a certain location. This will be marked on your map. You can actually see, well, I'm in the way right now. But if I move a little bit out of the way, you can now see that there is a blue line that is pointed over here. All right, so now I'm going to do like a little double jump to get down here. And I'm going to start heading down these ledges to the area below. However, I came up here to look out for a particular enemy. There's a giant roaming around here and I definitely don't want to run afoul of him. There he is. All right, so I don't know if we're going to be able to do it, but I want to kind of double jump onto those runes over there. And we made it. And then I'm going to double jump off. Oh, I took some damage when I landed. So the attempt at the double jump was to try not to receive any fall damage, but uh, I guess I jumped a little soon. And here is the beach. Look at this gorgeous coastline. Except for those crawling Lovecraftian horrors that are out there on the shoreline. It really is gorgeous, isn't it? I just got a new graphics card recently, a, uh, um, a, 26, a GeForce 2060 RTX. And, uh, oh, this is an invisible. I missed him. Uh, so yeah, I got a GeForce uh, 2060 RTX, and uh, now I've got this game on the maximum graphics settings, and it's never looked better. It's just, it's just such a gorgeous game, no matter what level you play it at. Yeah, so I hit the, it was an invisible beetle, and so if you kill it, all you have to do is strike it once. You get the Ash of War. There is a Kaiden Rider sitting over there by a corpse. I wonder... I wonder if I'm strong enough to take him on. I am going to sneak up on him and do a critical hit from behind just to get the advantage. Ah! 
I got him. Hey, pretty cool. All right, so I guess I'm strong enough to take on Kaiden Riders now. All right, so now we're going to ride south along the beach, and uh, we should come along, uh, once we get under those cliffs, we should come upon a uh, series of caves. All right, so this merchant that's hiding out underneath these ruins down on the beach, uh, he happens to sell a pretty decent bow. Uh, there's definitely better bows later on in the game, but if you're looking for a bow and arrow, to do your uh, ranged attacks, you couldn't ask for worse. He also uh, sells these stimulating boluses, which uh, cure sleep and blood loss and uh, poison. These are things that are kind of build up, and if the gauge gets full, then you'll start losing health. And look at that, he also sells the smithing stones we need. So, I don't know, I think I might buy him out of smithing stones. He's also got the armorer's cookbook, and it... Uh, it allows you to craft a whole bunch of things like you can see here. So um, there's these like slimes that are crawling around the beach. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think you're tough enough. I don't think we are tough enough at this point to take them on. Uh, there is an item over here with a corpse, but it's surrounded by uh, dead corpses that are going to pop up out of the ground and come after us. Uh... So, they're not the strongest corpses, and it might be a good time to uh, show you this mechanic. So when you kill undead things, they will fall on the ground and they'll start glowing like that. Uh, you've got to strike them again, otherwise they'll get back up. Alright, so over here is a spirit spring, and if we jump in this thing, it should put us on the top of that pillar. And then we should be able to jump from the Spirit Spring on that pillar up to the higher level. <laughs> Thanks for the tutorial. Alright, and that has put us right behind our starting point in the game, pretty much. So from there, I'm going to go down these slopes over here to the north, east, sort of. And there's going to be a bunch of vampire bats down here, unfortunately. But you can hear somebody screaming. It's these guys that are on these uh, crucifixes of sorts. They are being crucified. And it's probably not pleasant. Um, there is, however, this giant hole over here, which you don't want to go down, but there's an item right there. Another smithing stone. And we definitely need that. All right, there's actually a bat hanging up there. And that's what bone darts are useful for. You can actually knock... Uh, Enemies off their perch, just like that. Yeah, weak them up, weak them up pretty good with the bone dart there, and then you can just go over there and finish them off pretty easily. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, you see this glowing guy? You saw how we were at the artist shack, and we saw things from a certain perspective? That perspective is right here, so, if we go over here and touch this guy, he'll vanish, and then an item appears on the ground. And it's the Incantation Scarab. I believe this is actually a piece of equipment. Yeah, he could actually put this on your head. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny. A lot of the armor pieces are really interesting. All right, so we've got to find just the right spot to jump down to that ledge down there. And if we don't jump to just the right spot, it's going to be too high and it could kill us. Uh, so here goes nothing. Uh, yeah, I took some damage. Okay, so I didn't land on the right spot. I was trying to land on that ledge right there that I'm looking at. Uh, so if you're trying to do that jump, you can avoid that damage by landing there. There is a white wolf on the other side of that post, so maybe don't go there. Um, I believe we want to go off this side anyway in order to get further down there. Okay, so land there. And then from here, we want to land on that rock right down there below. All right, so there we go. Okay, so see this little archway with the torch inside of it? There's a really strong guy who walks in and out of that archway. You don't want to mess with him until maybe much later in the game. So we're going to turn around and go up here 
Uh, I'm now heading west along here, and this is where we find the cave. And I'm going to check my map just to see where I am. Well, yeah, so that's where the cave starts, but as you can see, we're well down here on the beach. Oh, I should have bought that torch. It's so dark. So I'm going to try not to fall into the cave here. Uh, but there, straight ahead. So, remember at the beginning of the video I told you I was going to show you how to find this item? Well, there it is. The Halic Drake Talisman. It's funny, from in this cave we can hear the Tarnish being crucified on the hill above. Which is so scary. Oh, there's that guy. So we are going to ride well around him. Because he is capable of inflicting... A lot of damage to a scrawny little tarnish like us. And we're going to go out here and use this spirit spring to get back up. We could actually land on this post. How do you like that? Uh, but what a view from up here. Huh? Isn't that great? I think there's a... Uh, there we go. I knew there was a grace over here somewhere. All right. Now from the side of grace, we're going to run over here and under this massive piece of ruins right here. Okay, and here's uh, here's another tarnished. Ah, uh, you must be the new tarnished. You do well to steer clear of a gill lake fledgling. Dragon, roost there. And it's Remember those fierce. guys? That it is majestic. So, unless you're mad, or wish to be burned alive, stay clear of the lake. We will, Mr. Yura. So that's his name, is Yura. Yeah, so uh, the thing is, is that, yeah, like I was telling you, there's that camp out there in the middle of Lake Agil. It looks like it's full of weak guys. You go over there and kill them easy. But the truth is, as you're headed toward them, uh, a giant dragon will land in the middle of the lake and kill them all. Sorry if that's a spoiler. Uh, it's a sight to behold, though. So definitely go check it out. Um, instead of doing that, we are going to go take on these ruins over here. So, yeah, there's a beast in here. We're going to go in here and kill it. Very shaggy. Very shaggy little beast. Uh, but yeah, they can be quite dangerous, especially if we're not, uh, using our shield at the moment. And then there's all these nobles here who are searching for something in the ruins, and they will attack us. So, yeah, there's kind of a big open area, like, it's hard to specify, I can't really zoom in on the map anymore. But yeah, down these stairs here, uh, I think there's actually a bunch of enemies down here. Yeah, a bunch of rats. Uh, the best thing to do, of course, is to lead them back into this uh, little cave here. That way they have to kind of funnel. Into this area, you can hit them with bone darts, of course. But yeah, that's the easiest way to take them all out. Uh, the thing is, is that um, I think that this chest is a trap chest. Uh, so if I open this up, it's actually going to teleport me to a very tough area where I'm probably going to be killed over and over again. So I don't recommend opening up this one until you're at a higher level. Um, but then it actually it can be kind of beneficial because that cave is full of glint stone. Pretty nice. Uh, there is a, if we go this direction, uh, into this enclosed area, I think we actually have to ride the spectral steed in order to get into it. Yeah, we have to double jump over. Okay, that's right. And then there's a little tunnel down here. And in here is a chest with a really good weapon. The Twin Blade. Okay, so yeah, this is a weapon that's just kind of worth checking out. Um, I'm just going to kind of throw it on. It's pretty cool. And that's pretty much it for the Dragon Burnt Ruins. There's another couple of guys that are sort of lurking around here. Like that guy. Uh, but there is that campsite over there. That's a Giel Lake. Oh, what the heck. Let's ride toward it and then let's ride out of here. There he comes. Boom! Kills all those friggin' guys. 
All right, let's get out of here. I'm in no shape to fight that thing just yet. So I almost forgot about Rat Boy, our little friend who was turned into a tree. Like I mentioned, there's like a another cave down here. Alright, so there it is, just like a little bit. I completely missed it. Uh, yeah, so if we go down in here, it's gonna be kind of dark. But there he is. You must leave this place at once. They'll rush in and beat you to a pulp. You'll end up just like me. Uh, yeah, so there's a sign of grace here. I'm gonna go ahead and activate it. Uh, I'm gonna need a torch. Yeah, see, he sells a torch for 200 runes. And now I'm going to equip... Uh, let's see, I think I put it here. Yeah, we'll put the torch in that hand so that I can switch to it. There it goes. So now we're gonna go down into this cave. The coastal cave actually goes... Uh, underwater it goes underneath the water and uh, over to a small island that uh, is worth checking out okay there's some more guys just kind of sitting over there And then there's uh, a couple of bosses in this next cave, but there's a message on the ground there. It's a gold summon sign. We can actually summon someone to help us. Old Knight Ishtaban. And this is pretty much gonna be our first boss fight. All right, so there he is. And once we get into the room, we should be able to see, we'll see uh, there on the left side of the screen. That means that we can now summon, so. I'm going to select my lone wolf ashes, call out the wolves, and we're going to kill all these guys. As you can see, there's actually two bosses there. He uses, like, gravity magic. So yeah, they're giving this one boss quite a... Almost got him. Stabbies! Let's see into that guy. There's the other one. Oh, Esteban is taking this guy on all by himself. All right, so we got the tailoring tools and the sewing needle. Uh, Istvan is still hanging around. Oh, there's some more demi humans to kill. All right, I think Istvan took off. There's some silver fireflies. Fireflies. Silver fireflies is how you would pronounce that. Uh, yeah, so we took out our first boss in the whole video. So if you continue on through the cave, There's probably a few more demi-humans. There's also this point, if you examine it, it will return you back to the entrance, but we don't want to go back to the entrance. So I'm going to get my torch back out and continue into this cave at the back here. Uh, let's see where we are right now. Yep, we are pretty much under the other island. All right, and here we are on this gorgeous island. I uh, don't need our torch anymore. All right, we're definitely going to activate this uh, sign of grace here so that we can fast travel back here and not have to go back to the cave. But uh, this is an interesting little church 
of the Church of Dragon Communion. So if you examine this pedestal here, uh, you can perform the ritual of Dragon Communion. If you have a Dragon Heart, which is an item that is acquired by killing a dragon, such as the one that we saw out there in Lake Agil, then you can get one of these incantations to use. You can use the powers of the dragon in your magic. Pretty awesome. There's some interesting statues in the area. Someone has gone around and cut the heads off all of the dragons, like an act of sacrilege almost. Okay, and then on the south side of the island, there's this little ledge where we'll find that beetle and we can kill it for a somber smithing stone. And that's pretty much it on this little island, uh, so we can teleport out of here. All right, so I'm back at the Misswood Ruins. I'm standing right underneath the Wolfman perched on their ruins top. And I'm going to open up my menu and go over to my gestures and do the finger snap. Boom, look at him. Who goes there? Kali sent you, did he? Ever the bloody busybody. Hmm. Maybe to him you don't seem so strange. <laughs> the name's Blythe. I'm looking for a man who goes by Darrow. He fled somewhere nearby. Or so I've heard. Come tell me if you find him before I do. I can offer you ample reward. We will find him. Darrowell is nothing but a traitor. And in need of a fitting end to his tale. So that's it. That's all that happens there. Now we're going to go back. And I think we're about ready to try Fortnite. We'll see. Alright, so right now I'm going to remix my wondrous physic. Uh, so it's not just like another HP flask. And then we're going to ride around the corner here. Uh, I want to make sure that i am got my shield ready. And all we have to do is ride up the road and through the gates as fast as possible. There's a bunch of demi-humans here at the front. And there's a ballista up at the top there that is firing bolts. We want to avoid that. We're going to ride past a bunch of guys to make them all mad. See all these guys getting mad? And then we're going to grab this golden seed and we're going to ride down here into the field to get away from these guys. Now, it's not so much those guys that we're worried about. What we're worried about is that mad pumpkin head over there. Uh, we're just going to stay away from these guys. Kill them if they get too close. But when that mad pumpkin head gets off the stairs, we are ready to go. So, yeah, I can jump past him there. And we're going to head up these stairs. When we reach the door, we're going to hop off the horse. And we're going to run through here. And ignoring all the items and stuff, we're just going to keep running as fast as we can. Guys are going to be throwing bombs at us. Uh, we're going to run up to the top here. Oh, we got hit by that one. And then that's the guy. Ugh. Ah, oh, we didn't even have a chance. Oh my god. That guy, so that guy has a uh, blood loss art. Uh, art of war that causes blood loss that we need to get. So I'm going to saddle up and try it again. Got him. All right, and we got the bloody slash. It only took two attempts. That's okay. All right, uh, so yeah, the dogs are probably just gonna stay here because they don't know to go away. So if you press the X button again, you can send them back. So if we climb down these stairs and move along this little balcony here, uh, guys are still gonna be throwing bombs at us, but if we search this corpse, we can get a smoking stone. Yeah, they're throwing bombs at us. Uh, I'm going to ignore the rest of the guys in here because it's kind of dangerous. And uh, yeah, we're going to go over to this tower here. And inside we'll find a ladder that we can climb. Second attempt. Not too bad. It's taken, like, the first time I played this game, it took me way more attempts. Than that. 
All right, and up here at the top is a chest that we can open in order to find a very important key item, the Dectus Medallion. This allows us to reach the Altus Plateau, which is where the final bosses of the game are located. So uh, we will need to find the other half in another part of the world, and then we'll be good to proceed to the Altus Plateau. All right, so I am going to go ahead and travel back to the Mistwood outskirts uh, side of Grace. All right, and then we're going to go back up here and talk to Kenny. Let him know that we have liberated his fort from that evil captain from Stormvale Castle. Ah, I've been waiting for you with bated breath. Did you manage to recapture my fort? Oh, excellent news. Just wonderful. And the knight's dead to boot. Well done, my friend. Well done, indeed. I knew I was right to trust you. Now, here's your reward, as promised. Go ahead. It's all yours. All mine? An Erdsteel dagger. I mean... Right then. Time for me to head to the fort. I've much to do. I told you that the dagger I'll wasn't the reason we were there. communication with the Demi-humans. What's that look? You don't believe me? Well, under the earth tree, co-mingling with the demi-humans is made possible. Even the vulgar shall not be left behind under the rule of true order. Which is why I, Kenneth Height, next in line as the rightful ruler of Limgrave, have sworn to uphold it. Just you watch, my friend. Just you watch. Okay. I'll just watch. Oh! I forgot about Ratboy! I forgot about Buck! Again! That's a difficult uh, quest line to keep at the forefront of your mind since it's not all that rewarding, but yeah, here he is. Oh. Wait. Is that what I think it is? Yes, it is. You got it back for me. He's all happy anyway. What made you go and do a thing like that? My mum was a seamstress. And that sewing kit was all I had to remember her by. I always wanted to be just like sweet old mum. Oh, then I s suppose I I can't just curl up and die, can I? All right, I, that's actually it. All right, so we can now add the Ashes of War to one of our scimitars. I think this is the one that's in my right hand. And there it is. This is, yeah, and we definitely want to use the... Uh, blood affinity because otherwise it just doesn't do anything i don't really even know why you're why you're putting it on there all right let's see which of these slots it went into oh yep it is on the wrong slot it's always on the wrong slot i don't know why uh but there we go all right so now uh now we can okay i don't want to do it toward kali but uh oh and yeah we're still not ready to take on that uh Three Sentinel. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go out here and try it on my favorite test dummy. All right, so if we press and hold the L2 button. What? Try again. Look at that, one hit. We used our own blood. You see how I reached over and like cut my own hand and then flung it at him. Isn't that cool? Uh, but of course it takes down your health. So there's now a chance that every time you strike normally, uh, with your sword that you can uh, draw blood or cause blood loss See like sometimes you'll see blood fly like you did at the end there oh. <laughs> It's awesome it never gets old and now that we have this ability we're ready to take on stronger bosses such as the one in this cave. So there's a cave full of wolves here, and there's also a boss in this cave. There's a big one. There's another one over here, there it is. And there's an item to get. A crack pot. 
that allows us to craft uh, items like uh, throwing pots and the other kind of pots that we've been talking about. Alright, so we're about to go into the boss cave. Uh, I think actually I want to use my shield. I'm going to take my flask to uh, increase my stamina before I get out there. And as soon as I get inside, I'm going to want to summon my hounds to distract the boss. Get out of here and heal. That was close. That was really close. Okay. There we go. Man, I have like a sliver of health left. That was kind of embarrassing. Okay, and remember I activated that statue, which is pointing somewhere over here now. Oh look, a bunch of weak guys. And there was one guy with the lone torch who was kind of protecting this little dungeon entrance over here. Uh, I'll just kind of show you where we are on the map. Right there. Not sure what that means, but uh, if you look just to either side of that chair, there's a gargoyle down there. So I'm pretty sure when we go to this room, uh, I think there's also one on the right, the left. Uh, I can't tell, but we are going to jump out. Ah, there he is. Sorry that the roof got in the way there. Oh, good. This guy's just... That guy was just hammering me with darts, holy cow. So yeah, lots of little traps like that. I think right down here is the boss room. So we're going to need to figure out the entire dungeon in order to uh, open up that door. All right, so there's another guy right there. Let's see if we can get him to come down here and fight us. Like a man, buddy. Come on. Work hatchet, nice. There's another one. Why am I missing? All right, I think I'm wasting these, and the actual way to get him to come down here is to move directly below him. Huh. All right, I have tired of messing around with him. All right, yeah, here's a big fire trap. So we have to run halfway down the hallway. There's gonna be what? And there's some guy I forgot about right there. So yeah, fire trap down the hallway there. We're going to need to run to about the halfway point, And then we're going to find a small little nook to the right. There's going to be fire from our right, but we're going to ignore that. And then all we have to do is go down there and strike that pillar in the middle. So here we go. All right, from both sides, see? All right, and then we come down here and we strike this. And down it goes. Now what you want to avoid doing is jumping on the top of it. I don't think... Yeah, if you jump on the top of it, it'll lift you up. Uh, yeah, and there's nothing up here. There's no, like, hidden area. So just jump back down and strike it again. Alright, and avoid getting back on top of it. Leave it deactivated so that we can stand down here. Again, we're going to run halfway down. 
Oh, I think I'm gonna die. Okay, let's heal up. Alright, so I think you saw another room there for just a second. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, gremlins up there on the wall. Look at them, just hanging out. Alright, let's uh, try to bring them one at a time over here to fight. Another one. And then there are goblins right there and over there. Uh, that guy is going to start coming at us. Oh, come on. Oh, see? It's so easy to get killed by one guy with a sharp knife in this early stage of the game. There we go. Revenge is sweet in this game. <laughs> right, uh, so we want to drop onto that platform below, but first I'm going to go back into to this room, which I believe is also a trap. Works like gangbusters. I love those uh, little things. All right, so is there... Yep, there he is. Oh, I lost complete control of my camera. There he is. All right, and got the another set of ashes that we can call into battle. All right, so believe it or not, there is actually a gremlin right there, but as long as we don't go for that uh, grave glove wart there, we'll be fine. All right, so yeah, somewhere a heavy door is open. It means we're ready to go back to the boss now. So uh, first I'm gonna head back to the side of Grace and rest up and recover. All right, so yeah, the boss chamber is now open. Uh, yep, when we go through the mist at the bottom here, we're gonna encounter the boss. So first I'm gonna take my flask. I'm gonna get my lone wolf ashes ready. And then in we go, and there it is. It's this kind of like, giant doll or something that uh, does that, so I'm going to set my wolves loose on it. I am going to... Oof. somehow. What exploded? What was that that exploded? Oh, man. I didn't even get up. Oh, his health was just like bare.
dead, baby. Got you that time. <laughs> and we get more ashes, the noble sorcerer ashes. So we are just really raking in the spirits here. And yeah, if we go back to the uh, back here, we see kind of a gruesome tableau. So there's all these tree roots and then there's bodies that are being absorbed into them because that's what goes on in the lands between. Uh, there is a kind of limited immortality, but every time somebody dies, their body has to be consumed by the Erd tree, that giant glowing yellow tree we saw out there in Limgrave. Uh, well, hopefully that is a good introduction to Elden Ring. We got powered up enough that we can start taking out bosses. And uh, with that, you should be able to work your way over to Castle Stormvale and enjoy the and kill the two bosses that you'll encounter there and uh, enjoy the rest of the game. I hope you enjoyed uh, this playthrough of Elden Ring with me and if you did, please click the like button and help me show this video to more viewers on YouTube. And consider subscribing for more videos like this. Thank you and have a good day.